So let's look at uh, joint characteristic function and its uh, usefulness and properties. You may recall that we defined the characteristic function for one random variable. But in any case, if you have two random variables, x and y, so we need two variables. It's expected value of e to the power j x u plus y v. The first, the first observation is that if you put v equal to 0, what do you get? So if, if you put uh, in the characteristic function, you put v equal to 0, what do you get? You get e to the power, look at here, you get e to the power e raised to j x u. This is what? This is just the characteristic function of x evaluated at u. So first of all, this information, this has got both the characteristic functions. You put v u equal to 0, we get the characteristic function of v. But what is a characteristic function? If you think of this as g x y, then this is simply expected value of I mean, double integral of gxy. gxy is given to be e raised to j x u plus y v multiplied by the joint density function of dx uh, dy. So you, those of you who have seen Fourier transform can also see that this is the Fourier transform of uh, the joint density function evaluated at u comma v. In the Fourier transform, conventionally we have a minus sign here, so you can think it of as at uh, omega one equal to minus u equal to minus omega one, v equal to minus omega two. Now, if you put u and v equal to zero, what do you get? Put u equal to zero, v equal to zero. What happens to the characteristic function? Anyone? What is it? Look at this, it's the area under the density function, that's one. If you put any one of them equal to zero, we just went through this, right? If you put u equal to zero, what do you get? A characteristic function of the other one, you can put u equal to zero and the other way. So the joint characteristic function has information about the marginal characteristic function. Also you notice that if x and y are independent, then what? Then you see this, this is anyway you can split into two functions. So this becomes e raised to j x u f x x dx multiplied by e raised to j y v f y y dy. So if x and y are independent, the joint characteristic function is the product of the characteristic functions. These are the main properties. <coughs> Sometimes it's easy to use the characteristic function to compute the density function. So let me show you an example here. Uh, suppose x is uh, Poisson with parameter lambda 1, y is uh, Poisson with parameter lambda 2, and x and y are independent. And we are defining z to be x plus y. So pro question is, what is the density function of z? You probably know the answer. But let me show you this using characteristic function. So characteristic function of z is what we are interested in. So my idea is, let me try to find the characteristic function. If this characteristic function looks familiar, then I can immediately conclude the answer. right? Uh, so look at this, uh, but this is by definition e raised to j uh, z omega. Instead of u, I put omega. That's my right, variable. Uh, but as, uh, z is given to be, let me substitute here. z is given to be x plus y omega. So this is of this form, e, <coughs> e raised to j x omega, e raised to j y omega, right? because this is a plus. Now what, look here, I, let me make use of, so look at here. If x and y are independent, what happens to the characteristic function? Oh, you can see it from here also. So this is, this becomes the product, right? So this becomes, because of the independence, e raised to j x omega multiplied by e raised to j 
y omega, right? So this is the characteristic function of Poisson evaluated at omega. omega, and the other one, characteristic function of y evaluated at omega. omega also. Anybody remembers what is the characteristic function of Poisson? I mean, if you look. Right? Is there minus here? No. Yes. Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. All right. So, what is the characteristic function of y then? No? So, let's plug this in here. What do you get? So what do you conclude now? This form is exactly the same as that form, except that. So what is the conclusion? This, the z is this random variable. The final form looks like Poisson. So we conclude that this is also Poisson with parameter. See, I didn't do any summation, integration, etc. So sometimes the characteristic function is useful. So you may say. Why not try to do this with the minus here? Uh, notice here, I'm, so suppose, let's do another problem. So you have the difference of two random variables. Look here, difference. So this is minus, there will be minus here, so there will be a minus here, right? There will be a minus here, so there will be a minus here, right? So what happens here? So if you put minus here, this becomes minus. When you, then you multiply these two, what happens? Everything gets messed up. So at least you know that if the difference is not Poisson, because now if you try to multiply this with this, you'll get some mess. So the characteristic function of x minus y is going to be e raised to minus lambda 1 plus lambda 2. So that's fine. Then here, it's a different story. Lambda 1 e raised to j omega 1 minus lambda 2 minus j. Right. Is it? Hmm? This becomes plus, this becomes plus, right? But this is not Poisson. So whatever it is, that is what it is. Okay. Uh, so we, we know that the difference is not, if you have x and y are Poisson independent, the difference is not Poisson, but the sum is Poisson. Okay. So sum of, uh, so you look what happens x plus 2y. So let's go through this. So you put x plus 2y, so here 2y, 2 omega, this becomes 2 omega. So again, the same problem. This becomes 2 here. When you multiply, uh, this is so. Again, you conclude that x plus 2y is not Poisson. It is something, but it is not Poisson. It's a discrete random variable. So very special case. If x and y are independent Poisson, the sum is Poisson. Generally, no other linear combination is Poisson with parameter lambda 1 plus lambda 2. Okay. So <laughs> let me go to the special case, which is uh, two jointly Gaussian random variables. So the characteristic function of, uh, uh, so remember you have the density function, if you recall uh, the density function of two jointly Gaussian random variables is
so this is the joint density function. From here, I'm just going to write down, and I'll show you how. To, if you substitute the, uh, the this density function here and simplify, this is a standard expression. I'm going to write down the answer. So you have mu x uh, u plus mu y v minus half sigma x squared u squared plus 2 rho sigma. So notice that here there is minus, here it is plus. Why? You just have to plug this expression and simplify this. This is the characteristic function for uh, two jointly Gaussian random variables. 